This is a kit I hope I never need to open. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. Since Hurricane Helene hit the eastern coast of the United States back in late September, I have really been trying to analyze and break down and learn as much as I possibly could through the interviews and the reading that I've done. I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned from that if we're really paying attention to those that actually went through this experience. I've talked to both people that were directly impacted by it, like Dean, who was without power for 22 days, and then I've talked to people that were outside the heavily impacted area, like Dan, who was helping those that were uh, heavily impacted by this storm. And I'm looking for lessons learned in that. And this bag right here is what I consider one of those lessons. And it was something that I read from Thomas, uh, and I wish I could remember his call sign, Thomas Witherspoon, K4SWL, I believe, but I'll uh, correct that if I'm wrong here on the screen. He talked about getting communications into the community. He was in a very heavily impacted area. They were left. Thomas himself had internet and had power, but only because of solar and satellite internet. But his neighbors had no communications whatsoever. And if you haven't seen one of the interviews uh, that Thomas has done, I'll leave a link to the one that he did with Ham Radio Crash Course down in the description below. Definitely worth checking out that interview. But the, the thing that struck me was nobody had communications up there, and there was a lot of rumors and things that started to swirl, primarily because there was no communications. So Thomas went and took ham radios out of his own shack. Now, him and I believe all of his family members are ham radio operators, so he had quite a few HTs sitting around. He charged those up and he started distributing those throughout his community there while they were left with no other means of communication. And I thought that was a really, really important lesson and something I haven't thought about before this event took place. And that's why I built the Community Communications Kit. So let's go ahead and I'll put you guys up on the tailgate so you can uh, take a look at what I've put inside this bag and see if you agree with me, see if there's something else we might need to add. Now, in order to keep this all together, I did pick up this inexpensive bag from Harbor Freight. And guys, I'll leave links to everything down in the description below if you're interested. I think this bag was only like 10 bucks at my local Harbor Freight. Uh, reminds me of one of those uh, old, uh, like World War II uh, tankers tool bags, I believe is what they were. Could be mistaken, but I think that's what they were. Now, when you open this up, what you're going to find is four different canvas bags like this that all have the zipper on the top, and they're all uh, different colors inside. Now, I'm only going to pull out the one, and we'll take a look at the contents of this one bag, uh, but all of these are identical. So, opening this up, the first thing you're going to find is a Redivus RA89. And I went with this radio for a few specific reasons. A, this radio will output 10 watts, uh, so it's a little higher, higher power than uh, most of your other HTs. The other thing that I really liked about this radio is it does have USB-C charging on the back. Now, typically, I'm not the biggest fan of USB-C charging. I prefer a radio that has a 12-volt barrel connector where I can just plug 12 volts right into the side of that radio. However, in this particular case, this radio is definitely the winner with USB-C because what do almost all of us have inside our car? we've probably got a USB-C cable to recharge our cell phone. So we can use that same cable that we've already got laying around to recharge this radio as well. Another nice feature of this is the big battery that it has. 
you can easily run one of these radios all day long and not have to worry about running out of power. I mean, unless you are really, really transmitting on it a lot. Uh, you're not going to have to worry about the battery. The other thing about this is these are super rugged radios. I've dropped the one that I've got on my desk. I've dropped it a couple of different times. Uh, once in the grass and dirt and the other time was on concrete. And it has survived without any issues whatsoever. And finally, the, one of the reasons I picked this radio is because this is... IP67 uh, rated. So when I first did a review on this radio, I submerged this radio in a bucket, a uh, five gallon bucket of water for 10 minutes, pulled it out and had zero issues with it working. So because of those reasons, that's why I went with the Redivus RA89. Uh, I think it is a great choice for this particular kit. Now, I did go ahead and pre-program some frequencies into this that could be utilized if we needed them during an emergency event. Oh, and by the way, with just a couple of key presses and turning the uh, radio on, you can fully Mars mod this radio. So that gives it uh, a little bit more capability if you find yourself in a dire situation. I'll let you guys search on YouTube exactly how to do that if you decide to pick up one of these radios. Now, beyond that, I created a very, very basic set of instructions. Uh, now, when I say basic, I mean super basic. The first basic tip is the big knob on the top will turn the radio on and off and also act as your volume control. Because if I'm handing these out to somebody that knows very little or nothing about this radio, they may not understand which one of these buttons on the side they need to push in order to talk. So that set of instructions is very, very basic. Now it does have some more advanced things on it, um, like uh, programming in frequencies and things like that. But if I handed these out, I'm really just going to set these on a frequency and lock that radio so that they don't have to worry about something getting bumped off. And all they would really need to do is uh, on off, adjust the volume, push the big button to talk. So very, very simple type stuff. I did go ahead and leave the manual in each of these kits uh, in case someone else was a bit more curious or if I needed to reference the manual in order to do something with the radio, I would have that readily available. I also included a programming cable. The programming cable came with each of these radios, so I went ahead and dropped it in every single one of these bags because uh, if I happen to need to reprogram a radio and I wanted to do that with a computer, I didn't want to have to worry about hunting one of these down. It's just stored with every single kit. The other items that you'll see in here are all uh, basic items that you find inside uh, the box as soon as you open up the HT. So a way to charge it, an antenna, and a charging cradle. This is probably uh, not needed in this kit. It will do USB-C. Uh, but more than likely, I would just encourage people to plug the USB-C cable into the back of the radio and be done with it. But this gives us every single item that we need in one bag so that I can literally hand out this particular bag and it's got everything I need for that particular individual. And now you see why I say I hope I never need that particular bag. Now it's not uh, a bag that could only be used in case of an emergency. If you were supporting some uh, bike event or something else to do with your radio club, maybe taking this bag out to field day with you, it might uh, give you some extra radios that you could pass out if someone didn't have an HT. Maybe you got a brand new ham that uh, shows up to one of your events and didn't even show up with an HT, this would give you a radio that you could hand out to them as well. But I think it's important for everybody outside of East Tennessee and North Carolina, and even those that are in those areas, to really pay attention to some of these interviews that are coming out uh, on YouTube and paying particular attention to A, what worked, but B, what didn't work and figure out what you would do in that particular case. And I don't mean to arm, uh, armchair quarterback this by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it's a great opportunity for us to learn some lessons through this experience. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.